A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Video. Today, a fun one, I suppose. When is 2 to the x equal to x squared? And one of the answers might surprise you. Leave your solution down there in the comments below. I hope you are going to enjoy the video. By the way, have you checked out my second channel, Flemmy's Wood, already? Check it out, posting regularly over there. Link down there in the description or up here in the info box. And now we are going to dive right in. So, when I solved this problem the first time around, um, I suppose there were only two solutions, actually. Um, what I did was graph the whole thing. Now, if we were to graph it on the right hand side, what we have is just a regular parabola, obviously, meaning it looks something like this. This is just a parent function passing right through zero, zero. And then we have two to the x power. And for two to the x power, we can mark some points and then see how the function progresses. So if we were to plug in zero into the x, it goes right through one. And this is also a spot where our parabola passes through one and one. Okay, um, meaning zero one is one of the coordinates and also our function goes to negative or it, it goes to zero. Um, basically for x approaching negative infinity and then it just increases all the time. So our function looks something like this. Okay, so when you craft this, you can actually see two solutions. Those were the first ones that came to my mind. This solution right here, when x is negative, we find this out and also the solution that we get here. Now, one curious thing about the graph is that I only drew it locally from an, an, an interval to two, for example, x being equal to two. But there's one thing about exponentials and polynomials if you compare those. Namely, if you were to compare those two, you're going to notice that at the moment, our, um, our, parabola, uh, per, our parabola, I'm terribly sorry, is still more increasing than our exponential that we got right here. But the thing is, exponentials in terms of the progression to in infinity will always overtake any polynomial of any kind. So exponentials grow faster than polynomials. Meaning if we were to draw this out a bit more, what we are going to notice is if we have our parabola here, we are going to notice this behavior at first. We are going to cut our function at this point. This is the same one that we got here. But at some point, our function, our exponential is going to overtake our parabola, meaning we are going to get a third solution out. This just has to do with the progression and also the conversion, etc. Um, convergence of our um, of our polynomials and also our exponentials in comparison. So we got three solutions here that we uh, need to find out. Now, the first one actually comes in quite natural and you can see two solutions basically at a glance. What is this first intersection that we get right here? If you take a closer look here, trivially, if we plug in x being equal to two, this just happens when we compare the exponentials and also on the other hand our basis. So if we plug in x equal to 2, x equals to 2 implies that 2 squared is equal to 2 squared. Okay, this is our first solution and this is actually the first one that we are going to get here. Now another solution that we are going to get, it's more to the right, is actually another power of 2 and this is the one that slipped through my hands at first and, and you can basically also get to the solution if you take just the logarithm on both sides and then play around with the expression a tiny little bit. But what happens if we plug in x being equal to 4 and this is just a nice coincidence that happens with powers of 2 or just 2 as a base in general when it comes to exponentiation. For x being equal to 4 we are going to get 2 to the 4th power is equal to 
4 to the 2th power. Those two look different at first sight, but what happens if we just multiply everything out? So 2 to the 4th power is 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, which is the same as 4 squared. So this is also a case that holds. And as mentioned before, you can take logarithms on both sides, and then you are going to notice that this is one of the possible solutions that we are going to get out. Now, what about the last solution here, which is actually the most interesting one out of the whole bunch? This is when x is less than zero. That's a rather cool solution. And how would you deal with something like this? Well, the key to solving for what we got right here, this intersection point or the x value, is to making use of the Lambert W function. I haven't used this one on the channel in quite a while, but I'm going to introduce you to the Lambert W function really quickly. So just imagine we have a function f of x. Or no, I'm going to use y. f of y is equal to y times e to the y. Now, how would you find the y value here? In a normal case, you are going to use the inverse function on the function to get yourself just the argument. But the inverse function of this kind of function is not very trivial. This is where the special function called the Lambert W function or product log is being introduced. I made a whole series on the Lambert W function. Check it out in my number theory playlist. Lambert W function is denoted with capital W, obviously. So W of f of y. It's going to give us just the y value. But this is also on the other hand. The, the cool thing about an inverse function is that if we plug the inverse function 2 into the argument, we're also going to just get argument y out on the other side. So what happens if we take, for example, f of lambda w of y? This is going to give us lambda w um, of y times e to the lambda w of y. This is also going to result in y. Meaning overall, if we just make use of this, we are going to get the relationship that our argument y that we are going to get is on the one hand lambda w of f of y and on the other hand it's just lambda w plugged into each and every argument that we had before. And this is what we are going to make use of. Meaning what we are going to do is we are going to tra transform this equation that we have right here into something of this form. Y times e to the y. And it just takes a bit of playing around. It's not too hard, but you need to play around with the expression a tiny bit. Just like you would play around with your girlfriend or your wife at home. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to use logarithms once again on both sides. If we were to use logarithms, we are going to get um, the log of 2 to the x, we can bring the x to the front, meaning this is x times the natural log of um, not y but 2 is equal to by the same arguments we're going to get 2 times times the natural log of x. Now we can separate everything a tiny little bit. Let's bring all numbers to one side and all the log of x's and the x's to the other side, meaning we are going to get that this is equivalent to saying we get log of x divided by x um, is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by 2. Natural log of 2 divided by 2 is the same as 1 half times log of 2. So this is log of 2 to the 1 half power, which is just the square root of 2. Also, log of x over x is the same as log of x times 1 over x. Let's rewrite this a tiny little bit. Meaning we are going to get log of x times 1 over x is equal to the logarithm of the square root of 2. Okay, now we can continue from this point onwards. We still want to bring it into this relationship. Y times e to the y is equal to something on this side, which we are going to use the Lambert W function on in a minute. Now, let us suppose that y is equal to log of x. What is still missing over here, or what is still in our way is this one of x. We need to transform it into something of the form e to the log of x in some kind of way. So let us transform this expression at first. 1 over x is the same as e to the log of 1 over x. Let's do this real quick. So log of square root of 2 is the same as the natural log of x times e to the natural log of 1 over x. Okay, that's far, that's good. But how does this help at the moment? We got log of 1 over x. Now the cool thing, 1 over x is the same as x to the negative 1 power. And we can drag powers to the front. That's the cool thing about the logarithm. Now, 
if we were to rewrite this, we are going to get log of squared of 2 is equal to, okay, so we get the natural log of x times e to the negative natural log of x. And we are close, we are nearly there, but there's still one thing. We still don't have y times e to the y. What we have is negative y times e to the y, or the other way around. How can we fix something like this? Well, we can multiply both sides by negative 1 to get ourselves the same argument right here. Just like here, y times e to the y. So y is negative log of x. Meaning, by multiplying both sides by negative 1, we are going to get negative log of square root of 2 is equal to negative log of x times e to the negative log of x. And now what we are going to do is we are going to use the Lambert W function on both sides. Meaning on the left hand side we are going to get the Lambert W of negative natural log of square root of 2. On the right hand side, what are we going to get on the right hand side exactly? Now take a look at this relationship once again. We are going to use the Lambert W function on both sides. And by this relationship of inverse function used on function, we are going to get the argument out, obviously. And the argument is y, where y is negative natural log of x. So this is negative natural log of x. And we are close to being done. Let us multiply both sides by negative 1. It's not equal to 0. It's a predecessor of 0, in fact. And now we can raise both sides to base e, giving us a final solution of x3 being equal to <laughs> e to the negative Lambert W function of negative log of square root of 2. And this is going to result in negative 0.7 Schlagmischtod. Beat me to death. This is something that you say in German and it sounds pretty brutal in English. But this is the third solution and this is also the last one. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today and I hope you were able to figure all the solutions out on your own. And if you did, and if you want to see more calculus, Lambert W functions, special functions in general, then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor brand, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this wonderful, wonderful channel. Now, if you're not yet familiar with Brilliant, let me introduce you to their service a tiny little bit. Brilliant is one of the best online learning platforms that you can find out there on the internet. In my opinion, at least it's the best online learning platform that I have tried out on my own and that I have been subscribed to for the past few years. And I can tell you, I don't regret my decision of subscribing to Brilliant. It's just an awesome website which is going to provide you with nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the wonderful mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry. No matter what it is you're striving for to learn in the STEM field, Brilliant definitely got something up the sleeve for you. And just imagine this scenario. I give you this problem. And then you are thinking, how can I deal with something like this? And maybe the first thing that comes to your mind is drawing the graph because it just makes perfect sense to look for the intersection points and the uh, corresponding x values. Now, Brilliant is going to provide you with exactly that. They don't want you to remember all the pure mathematics that you would have in university or at school. What they want you to do is learn mathematics by doing, by using your own two hands, by playing around with graphics, graphs, varying the parameters in a function to get certain results out and see how the function is going to behave under transformation or rotation or translation or whatever. Just look at that fine individual. Just imagine that we don't have 2 to the x. What we have in, instead is n to the x power n over in Brilliant, they're going to give you the chance of, as mentioned before, vary the parameter n to see how this function, this exponential, is going to transform under increasing or decreasing n and what the intersection points are actually going to be, how they are going to move along while also moving the lever, for example, and varying n. And this is just one of the instances where Brilliant really shines and it's just all over the place, over on their whole website. You're going to learn mathematics and physics and all the other things that you can learn in the STEM field by doing it yourself and by playing around with their wonderful animations and graphics. And if you are a visual learner, if you want to brush up on some old topics that you have already learned or maybe prepare for some stuff that you are going to have in university soon or that you are going to work on in your lessons at school, um, 
in due time, then why not make sure to check out my link at the top of the description preint.org slash mess. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of print already but more importantly the first time that people to actually actually make use of the link get 20% off an annual print subscription which is a fantastic deal considering how much content they already have available on the website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and I hope you did enjoy today's video and if you did why not make sure to subscribe to the channel and also to go over to Flemmy's Wood and Subscribe to Flemish Wood too. I'll see you in the next video soon. Stay safe. Ciao.